and it's the stories where you can start to get into the region and the terroir and what it, the wine, what's all about the wine. But it's also what makes people remember the event more. How does a person answer why something happened? When you look at the findings in different fields, Scant is the part of life in which we live. To attain the highest value. Why does wine pair so well with food and meals? Like that's that's like such a key part of it. I've got a philosophy about wine and actually other 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 beverages. I mean, why does wine pair with with food? It's because it's meant to be consumed in a social environment, and as is um, uh, when you eat food. You know, if you look at Europe more particularly, um, they sit and they make an event out of each meal, and. So when you have a meal, you usually have something to drink. For me, that that is um, that tipple would be the wine. But if I, if I talk about my philosophy on wine, and this is actually developed over time, and it's not it's not a, it's not a major philosophy. It's nothing groundbreaking. But that wine was put on the surface as a social tool to bring people together, and to help them sit across a table or wherever they may be, to look at each other in the eye and to tell stories and to connect and to slow down you know and this is more so now with with life at such a rapid pace it's a good time to to slow down and so i think around a meal having a glass of wine and just having that chat is an important thing and if it's not wine something that um, brings people together yeah I think that that idea of slowing down and, and connecting has resonates with a lot of people that listen to the show. What is it about the power of stories that so sort of captures your imagination and probably all the guests that you that you entertain? So, I mean, there's a number of things on the stories. The number, the first thing, is that if wine is facilitating conversation, it's facilitating storytelling and. Often it facilitates it in a way where the facts often don't get in the way of the story because obviously it's an alcoholic beverage. And so it facilitates storytelling. But more importantly, and for the consumer and for the people producing the wine, um, all, all of these wineries and these labels and stuff have stories behind them. And it's almost sacrilege not to hear the story. And in terms of the consumer or the tourist that comes in from the States or from the UK or for wherever it is, um, it's those stories that they remember. I often get a, 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 a people ask, Harry, can we go on a tour? And we've got a wine aficionado with me. We need to just have all the technical detail about the wine. Mm. And I've done many, many tours and not once has it been like that because often that person who is a wine techie or whatever comes with a family or comes with other guests and not all of them are like that and the way to bridge the gap between the technical knowledge of the person who wants that technical knowledge and the group who aren't that interested in the technical knowledge is through stories and it's the stories where you can start to get into the region and the terroir and what it, the wine what's all about the wine but it's also what makes people remember the event more if you go and you take someone to a table and you say, listen, let's start with the lightest white and go through those and we quickly slot the red until we get the full body we'll go, and then we head off and we go to the next place. That's not as memorable as taking a glass of wine, walking around and hearing the story about the wine, about the winery, about the people involved or just about the region, you know, just hearing those stories because that is what they remember. That's what they immerse themselves in. So there's a couple of angles of why wine and stories go so well together.